as I think about the privilege of meeting together in this fashion. I'm very glad that we don't have to look like anything. These moments together are not built on video appeal or lack of it. It's called Night Sounds, radio format that has been on the air for a good many years. Speaking of jobs and workplaces and dress and attitudes, I have on a work shirt, pair of jeans and walking shoes. And I'm glad that I don't have to put on a tuxedo. And I'm very happy that you don't have to dress up either. We can look like we are, and as one listener said one time, whom I had not met before that moment, but had been listening for a good many years, she said, I never thought you'd look like that. (laughs) And one lady looked me up and down and said, I never thought you'd be so scrawny. Doesn't anybody feed you? Well, such as we are, here we are tonight, and I'm glad you're there, any way you are, and I'm very happy to be here. And speaking again of workplaces, I've decided to title our time together, since we do come from different vantage points and handle different material that have to do with life and living and the pursuit of happiness and all of that, our message tonight is around a a question that I heard a late-night TV host ask several people in his audience. This was an on-the-street type environment. Every time he asked the question, it was, What do you do? And the answer was usually something that had to do with a job. But it's interesting that everybody knew the answer to the question, What do you do? Without question, without even thinking about it, it was work. Are you a carpenter? That wasn't asked. A banker? Mm Mm-mm. A student? But what do you do is almost more important in many people's eyes than how do you do, or who are you, or I'm glad to meet you. So tonight we'll be dealing for a few moments in our music and commentary with material that has to surround your workplace, the kind of job opportunities you're into. Do you like your job? Do you like your employer, the people with whom you work? Some time ago I saw an alarming statistic that revealed only 30% of workers appreciate their job or like it. The rest just go for a paycheck. What about the life of a Christian? Should he or she be any different? What happens when we take God's instruction seriously in our work lives? Jamie Lash, in his book This Was Your Life, said, Our work turns into an act of love toward God because we work with singleness of heart as to Christ. We work with purity of motive and purity of devotion. Does that indicate the way you work or the way I do? Well, as we come into our first music tonight, part of the work that I've been in through the years has been so enjoyable that I don't call it work, although there are late hours and a lot of toilsome moments and concentration And often we'd work late into the night in recording studios and on the road doing concerts. But it was so delightful. And I'd like to play some of it for you right now. An old song with which you might be familiar.
Anthony and I spending a few enjoyable moments at work there making that recording. And again, it's difficult to call it work because it's better than work. I remember when I got my first job driving a truck. Uh, well, this particular job was delivering flowers on holidays to cemeteries, going into these mausoleums with big crosses of gardenias. It was interesting work, but it was hard work, and I don't know, it wasn't too fulfilling. But the first real position that I enjoyed was after World War II, when many of us were sort of getting our lives together again. And at least I can speak for myself and saying that I was surprised with the opportunity that I had to get into music again. I played a trombone for a good many years, but never did any singing or speaking but being around very helpful people and going into commercial radio stations and speaking with well-known MCs of the day, they allowed me to stay in there and watch them work. And I learned so much. Tonight's program, What Do You Do? Which again is often the question when meeting someone. After you give your name, what do you do? It's understood that what you do is your job opportunity or your position at the workplace. In fact, it's interesting, one time I had a, I guess it was somebody I had been in high school with and we met someplace, I can't recall where it was, but we hadn't seen each other for many years and uh, he forgot my last name and he looked at me, sort of snapped his fingers and thoughtfully, oh, you're a trombone, right? <laughs> said, yeah, that's what I did in high school. I didn't make it very well academically, but I did play the horn. And went on from that into other areas of music using that instrument. But whatever your work may be, even if it's what you might term secular, it's very important. Because that can be a greater mission field than working with a group of Christians in a recording studio. Tonight's program, What Do You Do? What happens when we ask God's instruction seriously at the workplace? Our work can and often does turn into an act of love toward God. Our perspective changes. We work with a, a certain amount of purity and opportunity our labor ceases to be laborious. Whether we work at home or away from it, we begin to see our labor as a privilege instead of seeing responsibilities and drudgery. We see opportunities. Jamie Lash said in his book, This Was Your Life, widespread obedience among Christians would change not only us as individuals, it would change our society. 
If we worked as unto the Lord with all of our hearts, we'd begin to rise within our professions. And he asked the question, how do you as an employer feel about an employee who works diligently even when no one is watching? Who is eager to help? Who serves joyfully? Who is competent and content? Who is honest? Well, it's not hard to imagine someone with these kinds of attitudes being promoted. Given he has the talent and the ability to do his job. If godliness on the job causes us to rise to positions of greater influence, well, we can use that influence to bless most people and to advance God's kingdom. And we have but to remember Joseph in the Old Testament who rose to second in authority in the land, number two man under the Pharaoh who was reigning at that time. And he was delegated as the CEO who handled everything. And what an account that was. If you ever had the opportunity and have never done it or taken it, read the entire scenario of Joseph from his family situation through the very end of the whole thing of reunion and joy. Tonight's program could have been titled On the Job. But we've called it What Do You Do? Because again, people would say that because what you do represents who you are in many cases in people's thinking. One of the first scripture verses I ever recall memorizing was Colossians in the New Testament. Chapter 3, verses 23 and 24. And it starts right in by saying, Whatever you do, do it heartily with all your might, as unto God and not unto people, because you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. He has called us to an opportunity, not a drudgerous job. For we seek the reward of the inheritance, which is Christ, not people. But along the way, we can minister to people as they watch us, and we are being watched all the time. As they are being watched, you probably are too at your workplace, especially if you have any sort of a testimony for Jesus Christ. It's interesting to see the workers on the job here at Night Sounds. As we get into our responsibilities, we each have a system that we begin to develop, which works for us. Two people doing the same job may have two different ways of working, two different styles and systems, if there's that amount of latitude. I have a certain system here where I work in the studio. I guess there aren't many international broadcasters who run their own board. Are their engineers select the music and even furnish some of the music? Yet I count this as normal. It's wonderful. It's like driving your own automobile. You're not being chauffeured, sitting in the back seat. You're doing it. I can take the music up. I can pull down the background here and I can turn my microphone or up or too loud or too soft. It's neat to be able to control something like this. However, about five minutes before we came on the air tonight, I knelt at a chair behind me, which I usually do, and asked God's help, because this isn't my program. This is His, from the very conception of it. What to do, what to broadcast going through various kinds of materials, asking yourself the question, what happened on the weekend? How can I relate this particular situation to my audience? This program is not scripted, but we do quote many people. We read poetry. We quote the Word of God. I'm listening all the time. The antennae are out. Almost everything has some sort of an overtone of life. It's 
beautiful to be able to have the opportunity to select music for background, as you hear, to select soloists and orchestrations and artists as they ply their craft and allow us to be parts of their ministry. I'm so glad tonight that you're there. Whatever your opportunity, your job, whatever you do in the workplace, if you are a Christian and you've dedicated your time, talent, treasure, everything you are and have to your Creator, your job is going to be different because you're working for Him. You're also working for your employer, but you're going to do a better job. I believe that with all my heart. This particular opportunity that I have in radio right now, say I were on a jazz show, or rock, or something, or being some sort of a morning host. We've done all that in 50 years of broadcasting. But this particular opportunity right here, right now, with you, as far as I'm concerned, is what it's all about. Because God gave it. I'm commissioned to be here. Sometimes I wonder how long I will be here. I don't always know that the future is what God takes care of. and I don't try to play God, but I do get a concern sometimes when I realize I've been on the job here for over 50 years now. And I'm not as able to do things as I was 40 to 50 years ago. The procedures of gifts are minimized. Your talents aren't quite as sharp as they were, but I'll tell you, God is working a miracle every night here. And I come on the air tonight, I'm very tired. I can hardly talk, but I'm so excited inside to be with you and to be talking about this, to be speaking to you and me in the workplace. Because this is indeed a missionary station. So let's take our work seriously, no matter how mundane it may seem. Bobby Michaels changed his entire job of music from jazz and scat singing and love ballads to music for Jesus Christ. The lyrics are so important because we're transmitting meaning. This is one of the beautiful moments of his art history as he speaks of what lies ahead. When a father loves his son There's no good thing he'll withhold But freely give him all that he And when I see all you provided, it seems you never close the door. How I long to see the things you have in store. And when it couldn't get any better, you're better still. When joy is full to overflowing, you find a way to keep on filling. When I think I've seen it all, you show me so much more till I can't wait. be bought for some great price and to think you paid so dearly for my life and when I feel the pain you suffer the cruel cross 
that you bore how I long to see the things you I think I've seen it all. You show me so much more till I can't wait to see the things you have in store. I can't wait. The things you have here. What a fantastic outlook, Bobby Michaels. Song, The Things You Have in Store. Song of Prayer, actually. This is Night Sounds. I'm Bill Pierce on the job. Great to be with you tonight. What kind of work are you into? Love to hear about it. Thank you so much for tuning us in tonight. If we can pray for you, if you have a problem with your workplace and the people with whom you work, We'd like to stand with you in prayer. Our mailing address is Night Sounds, Wheaton, Illinois, 60189. If we can send you our catalog, embracing the various ministries of this outreach, let us know. I want to say one more thing, that God's solution, revealed in this particular passage which we've quoted from Colossians 3, needs to be repeated for all of us. And here it is once again, in a different translation. Slaves, obey in everything those who are your earthly masters, not with eye service as men pleasers, but in singleness of heart, fearing the Lord. Whatever your task, work heartily, as serving the Lord and not men, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the inheritance as your reward. You are serving the Lord Christ. And I think I can guarantee that if you take that truth with you and implement it, ask God to help you to do this, the entire workplace will take on a different dimension. And tonight we can both contemporize and personalize the slaves and masters, transferring it to employers and employees. Those demotivated by the thought that their work may be secular, should take note that Paul, the apostle, wasn't writing to ministers. No work is secular if it's done for the glory of God. And those demotivated by dislike for their boss or the people with whom they work, Paul wrote to us, in effect, you're working for the wrong boss. Don't work as unto men. Work as a God-pleaser. It's from him, the Lord, that you receive your reward. On the job, in the workplace. So, if somebody asks you what you do, you may say, I'm a missionary. I work at a lathe. Yes, that's true. However, how do we work? And what has God called us to? Something that demotivates us inside? Let's do it under Him. I'll not soon forget the first opportunity I had in radio, even though it was 50 years ago, (laughs) it's fresh in my mind. I did a bunch of done things as I was a station breaker giving weather forecasts and this type of thing. I made some really funny mistakes, funny to me, but they weren't to the manager. And he came up and into my studio during a break, he said two sentences, you got to think 
and you've got to care. I never forgot those two. Yes, let's think. Let's use the intelligence God has given us. The abilities, the gifts. Use them with all of our hearts. Establish them, improve them, surveil them. Be better tomorrow than we were today. And let's care. Care for Him. Love Him. Care for our employer, our employees. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for this directive as we go about our jobs in the workplace tomorrow. Thank you for your help through the years. We want to do the best job we can for you. And at that point, we'll be pleasing those, I believe, if we use our talents wisely, who employ us. Thank you for this privilege and opportunity. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you, those of you who are in the workforce, and we're always doing something for the Lord and for others. We can do that. Our mailing address, Night Sounds, Wheaton, Illinois, 60189. Love to hear from you. Till next we meet, take the Lord on the job, and what a change. God bless you, and good night.